Hearts Up, Trove Heights Online, we're so glad you're here. Let's worship, let's give thanks, let's surrender to what he has for us here today. Come on, let's sing all together, one body, one church, come on.
thank you for the victory. Thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you for saving us. For doing something that we could never do on our own. That's our prayer here today. 
So we are fired up to have you here today. Welcome to Tro Heights Online Season Number Two. Come on, y'all fired up? We're fired up to have you here with us today. Thank you for joining us, man. You can go ahead and grab a seat where you're at. The team's gonna grab a seat where they're at. Hey, Trove Heights Worship in the house, man. We are so excited. Some of y'all have been riding with us for a little while now, and uh, you've been watching replays for the last six weeks or so. And man, I just wanna say thank you for hanging on and riding with us and sharing and commenting and posting and following and all the stuff you've been doing. It's making an impact. God is doing some really, really special stuff. And so before I jump into what I wanna talk to us about today, I just wanna kinda give you a few updates because you had not seen us in a little while. We're in a little bit different of a space. It looks a little different. But this space is actually where we are now gathering with our launch team every single Sunday morning. We are having launch team gatherings and we're just building our culture and worshiping together and praying. And man, it is so cool what God is doing. And now we get to come to you with Trove Heights Online, season number two and give you a little bit of a new look and a new feel. We're gonna have a little bit of a shorter service here for you. Very intentional, I'm only gonna preach for about six and a half hours, it's all good. Seriously, that's gonna be about 15 minutes. I'm gonna give you some practical stuff that I believe will help you. But our hope and our goal is that from this point on, whenever you jump in with us, that you actually get a little spark, a faith lift as I've always liked to call it. And then you leave from here and you're ready for whatever comes next. You're just ready to go, you're fired up, you're inspired. And that's my hope. So I'm gonna do my best to give you a little encouragement today. Um, if you want to know more about what we're doing, you can go to trovehights.com and you can sign up for our email list. Uh, you can jump in, be a part of everything. And matter of fact, go ahead and hit share with somebody before we start and jump in here to today. Go ahead and hit share. Invite somebody to be a part of this. I believe that a moment in the presence of God can change your life. It doesn't matter if you're in the room, if you're watching something online, if you're listening to something, I'm telling you one moment with God can change your life. And so my hope here today is that you get a little something new, a little, little something new, and you can have a, a moment of life change. I'm gonna talk to us today on the idea of faith will. Faith will. And I want you to walk away from this today, and in the midst of all the craziness in the world around you, <laughs> when issues pop up, when stuff you have no idea how to handle, I want you to stop and go, nope, faith will. Faith will. And that's what we're gonna look at here today. If you look in James 5, 15, it's gonna be kind of our reference verse. It says this, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up, and if they've sinned, they will be forgiven. The prayer offered in faith will, and I wanna just lean into that for a few minutes. The prayer offered in faith will, faith will. Faith will do some, some amazing things. And so I'm gonna give you a little acronym. What is faith? I'm gonna give you a little acronym, okay? Faith is this, forwarding all issues to heaven. Faith is forwarding all issues to heaven. That, hopefully that's a cool little cute way for you to remember. Write that down, put it on your fridge, do something. <laughs> Faith is forwarding all issues to heaven. This whole relationship with God that we live is built on faith. And I know that's hard to grasp, but at the end of the day, our God is bigger than we are. Than we are. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. I don't have to know how, I just have to know that he will. And I know that faith will if I lean into that. And it says so right there in James chapter five, verse 15. And so as we kind of dive into this, how does faith operate? You're like, I don't know about no faith. And I'm not talking about like a name it and claim it, prosperity God, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm simply saying what scripture says, that the prayer offered in faith will make things move. Jesus told the disciples that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the tiniest little thing in the world, it can, you can look at a mountain and say from here to there and it'll go. And so today I wanna to encourage you with that. I wanna stir up your faith here for just a few minutes. First one, first service of Trove Heights Online Season 2, let me just stir up your faith here for a moment because I want you to be able to leave and then stir your own faith up. We're gonna look in Romans chapter four, Romans chapter four, verse 16, and we're gonna look at a guy named Abraham because Abraham, they like to say, is the father of faith. Like this dude, if you wanna know how, how to have some faith, you can look at Abraham's life. And he'll help you. So we're gonna look at verses 16 through 22 here in Romans 4. And it says this, it says, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father, father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Now, time out right there. Look, I don't know what kind of God we're believing in. The world around us is trying to come up with all kinds of gods, but I'm gonna tell you today at Trove Heights, we believe in the God that brings the dead back to life. We believe in the God that creates new things out of nothing. That's the God I'm talking about here today. Faith will. Verse 18, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. Now, I love that right there. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God said to him, 
That's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though, he had a reason, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was his wife, Sarah's womb. Verse 20, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. Verse 21, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. Faith will. Because of, God's, uh, because of Abraham's faith, God did something. He did something back. He counted Abraham as righteous. And when you have faith and you can stir your faith up, faith will make things happen. Faith will cause God to do things in your life that he never would have done if you didn't have the faith for it. And we see that here in Abraham's life. And I'm going to give you a few things out of that scripture passage right there that will really help you. And the first one is this. You have to hope no matter what. <laughs> That's what faith is. Hope no matter what. I mean, man, you look at the last 12, 15, 18 months around us, man, it has been crazy. You're like, there ain't no hope. Yes, there is. His name is Jesus. I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to hope no matter what. Verse 18 of, of Romans 4 right there, it says, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. Even when there was no reason for hope. We could look at the world around us today and literally we could say there is no reason for hope. But when you have Jesus, you have the hope of the world. Jesus is the hope of the world. And therefore, us as the local church, we're going to go ahead and be, we're going to reach out and we're going to be the hope to the world around us. We're going to give them Jesus. We are going to hope no matter what. Now, in my case, we look back at that first song that we sang during our worship set. And it said, you took what the enemy meant for evil and you turned it for good. Now, if you go back to earlier Trove Heights Online Services from a few months ago, you never heard my story. You can go watch that. But ultimately, I was as far away from God as I could possibly be for 10 long years. I was so far from God, most messed up dude possible. And in 2012, I was diagnosed with cancer, stage four cancer. And I remember the day that I found out my whole world was crashing down. I had no reason to hope. Everything, all my hope's gone, no reason. But I look back here today because I started a journey. The day that I was diagnosed with cancer, I started a journey to go on a path to meet Jesus and fall passionately in love with him. And fast forward to June 3rd, 2013, when I did that and I finally just said, okay, I'm in, faith will. I moved and God took what the enemy meant for evil. And look at this, the enemy thought he was gonna take me out with cancer, but yet God used that to bring about a new life, a changed life that is now reaching other people because I'm a hope no matter what. God has done too much in my life. I had no reason to hope, but I'm gonna keep hoping. That's what Abraham did. I don't know what's happened in your world. I don't know what's happened to this point, but I promise you, you've already survived 100% of your worst days. You already made it. So hope no matter what, because remember the last time you had no more hope? Guess what? God came through then. If he did it once, he can do it again. I'm telling you, you got to hope no matter what. And the way you do that is by doing this. The next thing is you got to believe God's promises. In verse 20 of Romans 4, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. In the middle of no reason to hope, if you just stay locked in on God's promise, it's not just that you're just going to get by. You're just going to make it through. You're just going to get on. I'm going to make it through today. Nope, your faith will grow stronger. You, in the middle of no hope, when you lean into God's promises, your faith grows stronger. Faith will. Faith will do some stuff. But the only way you're going to have the faith is to remember where he's brought you from, what he's already done, and what his word says about you. And so I'm going to tell you today, maybe you have no idea what the word of God says and nobody's spoken anything great over your life. The word of God, God himself, he says to you, you are more than a conqueror. You are the head and not the tail. You are the first and not the last. Come on, you can do this. You got this. God has a great thing and a great call on your life. We want to call the champion out of you here at Trove Heights. That's what we aim to do. But you have to believe God's promises on your life. When you know, like, look, when I was a kid and my dad told me he was going to take me for ice cream, I wasn't forgetting about that. We were going to get that ice cream. And sometimes we got to lock into God's word that same way. You got to remember, oh, I know there's no reason to hope, but I remember what God told me. I remember what he said. I'm more than a conqueror. We're going to get through this. I'm going to hope no matter what, because I'm believing in God's promises. And then the next thing that Abraham did was this. He was fully convinced. And so today you need to be fully convinced. My hope is that here in about five minutes or so that when we jump off here that you are fully convinced. I'm gonna do my best in 15 minutes to fully convince you to jump in with all that you have to, to lean into your faith and say faith will be fully convinced. In verse 21, it says, Abraham was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. 
Oh, man, God is able. Are you convinced of that? Because I'm telling you, when you're convinced that God is able no matter what you see, you walk around with a little bit different swagger. You walk around with a little bit of a, a different look about you, a different feel about you, something about that. No, nope, God is able. I don't care what I saw. I have no reason to hope, but I know what God's word told me. And so therefore, I am fully convinced you can't tell me otherwise. I have a relative who is an atheist and maybe you're joining us and you're an atheist. Man, thank you for being here. My hope is that maybe I can just stir you a little bit to want to check out more, just find out a little more. I was talking to my, my uh, relative and we were talking about it and they said, but it doesn't make any sense if it's all about faith. I said, I, it doesn't have to make sense. I don't have to know how, I don't have to understand it. But if you knew what I know about where I came from and who my God is, I'm telling you, you'd be fully convinced too. I am fully convinced. Convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Matthew 21, 22 says it this way. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Faith will. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what kind of craziness is going on, but I'm telling you today that faith will. Faith will do things that you could never do otherwise if you didn't lean into the promises of God. You have to hope no matter what. Lean into God, God's promises. Find you a few scripture verses. Write some on your mirror. Put them on, post them in your car. Like, and just recite them. Just say them. Just, just say them to yourself every morning. Declarations of God's promises over your life. You will be fully convinced. I see a story in Mark chapter 10. I'm gonna kind of try and land the plane with this and hope that you take this same approach with your life that we see in this guy's life, this beggar that we're gonna look at here in Mark chapter 10 as we close today. His name is Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. I love this so much. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man named Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, the first thing you need to know when you need Jesus in your world, you got an issue, this guy is blind, just shout to Jesus, just do that, I promise it'll catch his attention. Number Verse 48, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but guess what he did? He shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. He shouted again and again and again, and guess what happened? Verse 49, Jesus stopped. Oh man, I wanna, I wanna be so loud with my faith that Jesus stops. I don't care if I'm blind. I don't care if I'm broke. I don't care how far gone I feel like I am. You shout at Jesus, he's gonna recognize and he's gonna stop. Call to Jesus. Then it says, they, so they called to the blind man. Cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I wanna see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Faith Will. Notice Jesus, Jesus didn't touch him. Jesus didn't pull out like a magic wand. Jesus didn't do anything crazy. He didn't sprinkle some special dust. He said, what do you want me to do for you? And this guy said, Rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, your faith heals you. Your faith did it. Your faith will. Your faith will. Oh, I'm telling you, if you lean into this today, I'm telling you, you could change your life. What would happen if every time you got a bad bill or a bad doctor's report or something, what if the first thing we did wasn't just get down and get all cursing and all upset and mad? What if we said, God, I don't understand, but you know what? I trust you, God. I just ask you to do what only you can. Faith will. You got to hope no matter what. And you'll be able to do it when you believe God's promises. And then you will be fully convinced. And then what happens is exactly that. Immediately, immediately he received his sight. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight. What if, what if he didn't have any faith? What if he stopped shouting at Jesus? This guy had no idea what was going on. He was in a predicament. The dude was blind. And he shouted at Jesus. And then when it still didn't get through yet, he shouted some more. And we shouted some more, then he got Jesus' attention. Jesus stopped, what do you want me to do for you? Your faith has healed you. Today, you gotta know that. You have to hope no matter what. And when you hope no matter what, you're gonna shout at Jesus every chance you get. <laughs> Just lean into his promises. This guy knew who he was. He was sitting by the roadside because he knew Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was coming. He knew about this man, this Messiah, the promises uh, that the word says, he knew. So that's where he leaned into and he still kept shouting all the more because he was fully convinced. I just got to get his attention. I don't have to do anything else. I just got to get Jesus's attention and I believe everything can change. He was fully convinced. 
And so I want you to take that same approach today, no matter what you're dealing with in your life. And listen, it's as simple as this. Maybe you're like, I don't, I don't know about no faith, man. I don't know, I don't, I'm, you don't know about my life. I don't know, I don't know how to have faith. It's as simple as this, Luke 17, five. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Jesus, I, I, need, I need an increase of faith. You just ask him. You ask him and he'll help you do it. It says in, in the word that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You get close to the word of God and you ask him to increase your faith, I promise he'll do it. I guarantee it. It's in the word of God. I guarantee it. And so today I'm gonna ask you to do that. I'm gonna ask you to make a decision to put your faith in Jesus. I don't know what you've put your faith, put, been putting your faith in be, uh, leading up to now. I don't know if it's been in your money, in your job, in a stimulus check. I have no idea, a presidential candidate. I have no idea what you've been putting your faith in. Hoping that something would change and shift, but I'm telling you, none of that is gonna do what you want it to do. Only Jesus can do what you need him to do. Faith will today. And it's as simple as what it says in Isaiah 55, six. Seek God while he's here to be found. Pray to him while he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life and the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. He's lavish with forgiveness to you today. But all it takes for your faith to be increased is to put your faith in Jesus and say, God, increase my faith. Seek God while he's here to be found. That's my hope here, right here in this moment, that I give you an opportunity. God's here to be found. All you gotta do is seek him, accept him and seek him. And faith will, I'm telling you, you're gonna begin to watch your life change in dramatic ways if you just remind myself, nope, faith will. I know what I see, but faith will. I know what I'm hearing, but faith will. I know what it looks like, but faith will change everything. And it's a promise in his word. And so today I'm gonna ask you to make a decision with me to put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you've never done that. Maybe you did at one point and somewhere along the way, you just kind of wandered away from church. You kind of wandered away from good people in your life that can lift you up and pour godliness into you. Maybe you walked away from all that. Today's an opportunity for you to seek God while he's here to be found. Make the greatest decision of your life and put your faith in Jesus. And God, anybody who needs a little bit of a faith lift today, God, I just pray that you increase their faith right now. Anybody watching, God, who has been down and who has wandered away from your promises because of everything that the world is trying to throw at them, I just pray right here and right now that you increase their faith in Jesus' name. God, raise it up in them. Stir it up to the point where they walk out from this moment and they say, faith will. I trust you, God. We're gonna hope no matter what. We're gonna lean into your promises, God. And we are fully convinced that you are who your word says you are. And if that's you here tonight and you know that you need Jesus and you need to give him your full, complete trust and faith, make him your Lord and Savior. Say a prayer with me like this. Right there where you're at, you can say this prayer. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I put my faith in you and I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are my Savior, that you're my Lord, and I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, man, it fires me up to know that you just said yes to Jesus. And listen, if you just said yes to Jesus, I want you to take a next step with me. The journey starts with just giving, putting your faith in Jesus, but then there's more, your faith can increase. We wanna help you with that. So there's next steps that you can take. And if you said yes to Jesus, then email me, kevin at troveheights.com. I wanna personally connect with you and just have a touch point, man. I'll do a phone call, I'll do a face, we'll do whatever. I just wanna connect with you and I can help you with some next steps on how to increase your faith. One of those ways is you can jump in a small group. We have small groups available here at Trove Heights. Maybe you're not watching from Nashville, you're from somewhere else. We have virtual small groups you can be a part of. So go to the website, troveheights.com, click that link that says small groups. We'll help get you plugged in, because I'm telling you, if you wanna get closer to Jesus, get around some people that are close to Jesus, and it'll get you there, I promise you that. So jump in with us today. Invite somebody back next week. Matter of fact, share this particular service with somebody. This is Trove Heights Online season two. Man, we got a lot of good stuff coming down the road over the next six months. Launch day is August 22nd of this year. We cannot wait for what God's gonna do. And in the meantime, if you're here in Nashville and you'd like to be a part of our launch team or check that out more and learn what that it's all about, uh, you can come in this room with us every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We'd love to have you a part of it. You can join us for our launch team gathering and learn more. 
get in the game with us, man. Let's increase our faith together. I believe today that faith will if you just increase your faith. Let's ask God to do it. Let's get around each other. Let's press in. And listen, if you'd like to give towards what we're doing, we're raising money to plant a church. Those of you that have been giving, thank you for the way that you do give. We, we need a lot more money to do what we're trying to do, but we believe God is going to do it. and He's going to do great things. So you can find out more about that at troveheights.com slash give. So into what God's doing here, I believe that's a great return on investment when you talk about what God's doing eternally right here and right now in the city and beyond. We love y'all. This is my prayer for you today. I pray that the Lord blesses you and keeps you. I pray that his face shines upon you, that he turns his countenance toward you, and that today I pray that God gives you his everlasting peace. If you receive that, come on, make a shout unto the Lord right there. Tell him how much you love him. We love y'all. Trove Heights Online Season 2. We'll see y'all next week. Y'all have a good one.